Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part four of my BB-8 version three build. We'll get it right this time. So I've built version two, which I've got here, and now I'm working on version three. And there's quite a lot of explanation about why I'm doing this in part one of version three. And that's really worth reviewing to find out why I keep building more and more BB-8s. And I know we're on to version three and we've done quite a lot of parts, but I am on to Hulkbuster part 49, and no one's really objecting to that. So here we go. Uh, this one basically essentially can lean sideways to steer and it's gonna be mechanically much more sound. So without further ado, let's have a look inside here, see where we got to last time and see what we're gonna do this time. This is where we left off last time. I've printed this banana piece, which is an internal hub that drives along on this red tire. And I did print a more grippy tire that I haven't put on yet. And that drives the internal hub round which of course causes this to run backwards and forwards. We've also got the trousers, which go like this, which look like a pair of trousers hanging on the washing line, and those um, allow it to bank to steer and also stabilise, which is what's missing from my version 2 build. But in order to spin on the spot, we need another axis, and you'll remember in version 2, which I've got just here, there is a flywheel in the bottom, which spins round, and that spinning causes the droid to turn the other way, so we need to implement something similar in this version. Now that flywheel is going to be quite heavy, it's going to have all the mass to keep the mass low, so it doesn't tip over with the head on top. It's also going to move with the trousers, so that um, the mass moves and that makes it tip sideways more. And of course it goes round with the banana, the internal hub, which keeps it driving um, forward and back as well. So we need some way of fitting a flywheel around, which fits in CAD, but I haven't designed any mounts for it yet, and that's going to go all the way around this motor. And this is the motor responsible for tipping the trousers. So we need to work out how the flywheel is going to fit round here. And ideally we need something that holds it centrally and doesn't allow it to move round. So I can use a pair of motors, as I did in version 2, with little wheels spinning to spin it round. In version 2 I just mounted the plastic flywheel on some ball bearing races mounted all around, but that's going to be a lot trickier, so I decided I should do something like use a Lazy Susan, which of course holds itself in the middle and spins around really freely. And I have this turntable that's not really suitable, I was going to cut a hole in the middle, um, and inside here we've just got two kind of plastic plates, and then we've got this thing which holds ball bearings. And that spins really freely. It's a bit flexible though, obviously we want to mount this on maybe three or four points and have it hold the whole flywheel. So I then went on eBay and I found this version which is very similar but with a hole in the middle. So this again can bear quite a lot of load and that would almost be ideal. This one is plastic as well so there is a bit of flex which causes some unnecessary friction. But unfortunately the mounting points, obviously this is um, designed to go down onto the surface and have a tray or something on top that you'd have in the centre of a table. So the mounting points cross each other um, and it doesn't work very well if I pull these apart, which is how it would be hung. It really wants to be pressed together. So what I'd have to do is effectively cut off the mounting points on the bottom, mount the upper ones to the flywheel so it's pulling weight down and then mount the outside ring being suspended or the other way around, um, which is a bit inconvenient. So I had another look and found these, which of course are used quite commonly in various builds, including R2-D2 builds. And this has a center ring that turns. It is aluminium, so it is not really flexible. And it has lots of ball bearings in, and it spins quite freely. So with all the mass in there, that's gonna be probably ideal. It's also got a number of mounting points pre-drilled some of those go all the way through, and some of them don't, but I can drill the others through, and the same on the outer ring. So um, again, that only, well, it's designed to work one way up, to press this against this, but because it's a ring inside each other, that's gonna be easy to mount. So I just need to make sure that I mount it up the right way, so that the two halves are pulled together in the way it's expecting, and then I can mount that on four points, maybe the inside ring, and just screw the outside straight to the flywheel. Now will hold everything rigid, or maybe four mounting points, and it'll stop it shifting so that I can get good traction with the motors. So here's what I've come up with. The blue ring there is sized correctly to be the same as the Lazy Susan, and I've put the holes in there, which are the four holes I've chosen to mount it by on the inner ring. So I've got these kind of yellow bridge parts, which are brackets, which of course hold this onto the trousers. 
and those fit here so you can see those bridge over those middle parts which are already there they've got the same mounting holes and that means I can remove them so they're going to be screwed on for now and then of course that means the flywheel sits quite nicely around everything so this Lazy Susan was a bit bigger than I wanted it's a 14 inch Lazy Susan really I wanted a 13 inch but they don't seem to make them that size so I've made the flywheel slightly bigger at the top which is what this odd um, kind of step in it is um, but that seems to fit in there fine and it can still tilt about 20 degrees before it crashes into anything and of course it moves along with this motor and all the rest of the mounting um, and that motor drives against this blue track so um, that actually means that this flywheel slides under that track and it can move yeah just about 20 degrees before it starts to hit any of the other frame and I can still trim off a bit of the inside there if I want to so that um, we can give that a slightly bigger travel but we'll see how that goes when we come to print the flywheel and the flywheel is going to be sort of empty but with screw holes to screw the lazy susan into then it's going to be filled with lead so uh, we'll print these and mount it up and see how it looks Here we go, so the uh, Lazy Susan I've just put in there, it does just fit in between here, but only just. And here are my two mounts. So um, we need to put these on here. These will screw on, as I say. So one fits on that side, and one fits on this side. They're pretty tight fit. I left uh, about 0.2 mil clearance all the way around, but they fit fairly snugly. There we go. And then the Lazy Susan, of course, fits on here on the inside. So there's screw holes each side here. I need to drill the other ones through. But that seems to align okay. So if I just hold that in position, that will allow this to tilt. And the flywheel below it. And of course it actually stays level and the robot tilts. But I don't think we need even 20 degrees to tilt enough to steer. We certainly don't to stabilise probably 10 or 15 degrees so that should all work out fine so the next thing is going to be putting the flywheel in with all the mass in it then we'll deal with motorizing it which essentially means putting um, a little motor either end facing down with a rubber wheel running on the inside So here it is all mounted. I put these black marks on, you'll notice, so I could remember which way up the Lazy Susan was. So this was the side with the little feet on that's expecting to press down, and the other side of the inner one expects to press up. So that's the correct way up. So that seems pretty good to me. And of course it can tilt. This thing needs a lining, and there are end caps to fit it on. So it clears the little wheels, which I was a bit worried about and that should be able to tilt. So now I just need to make the flywheel which will contain loads of lead shot that of course hangs below that and is contoured down into the bottom of the ball. As I said the flywheel hangs below the Lazy Susan there so this is what this purple thing is which is basically the same shape as the one I showed you in the CAD of the whole layout of the robot. Uh, but of course I need to make that hollow to put the lead shot in so if we have a look inside here you can see I've divided this into thirds so that it will actually print on the print bed and I've hollowed each one out and I should be able to get two kilograms of lead shot in there which will be put in with a binder to stick it together and stop it rattling. So um, obviously it's divided into thirds and be printed upside down on the print bed and I've got screw holes there to attach to the Lazy Susan all the way around and hopefully everything will align once I've printed these and put them back together I've got bolt holes to help align the ends together and then as I said before the uh, wheel that drives this or wheels with the motors will drive around the inside on that smooth surface all the way round so we need to be quite careful there's no lumps and bumps and the whole thing should run quite smoothly
Right, here are all my sections. So I've got all three of them printed. I've only attached two to the flywheel so far, or to the Lazy Susan. This is the uh, last third, and it appears to fit together pretty well. All of my screw holes align and everything, so that's really good. So the plan is to bolt all of these together. I've bolted these two together, but the third one needs fitting. So I'll put those together, then we'll put lead shot in, then we'll screw this back on, and we should be able to fit it inside. Before I fill this with lead shot, I've decided to do a test assembly. So I've just bolted these together. You can see the uh, bolts on each piece, and now I'm going to screw this on top, and then we'll put the trousers in and put it inside and check that it can actually swing okay. So here is my assembly. Obviously I've put this onto the axle, attached this which spins round, which is going to be fine. Moves really freely in all directions. So as I mentioned, we're going to put some little motors in each end that actually drive that flywheel, but there's actually loads of space there, much more than I had in version 2. So I know that's going to be no problem. And of course those motors are going to run on the inside of this to push it round. But it's held extremely well in place by that lazy Susan. So hopefully, if everything has gone according to plan, this should fit right back in the robot, and it should be able to move and not hit anything. All right, here it is inside, so that seems to be okay. Um, I've had to actually shift this up slightly. You'll notice there's a gap here, and I've just screwed the screws in. So I need to make a shim to go in here to raise these brackets up. And the reason for that is that I didn't have in my CAD when I was testing this the little guide wheels around the edge. So if it's too low, it actually crashes into those. Um, but putting it that height seems to work okay. And if we look around the other side, in fact, it gives me the same amount before I crash into the main drive wheel. So this gives me quite a bit of lean in this direction, pretty much about that much. And in this direction, let's just see, about that much, which is quite enough to steer in a nice arc, and it's definitely enough to stabilise which obviously doesn't involve leaning that much at all. The other option, of course, is to move the little guide wheels onto the outside of the banana, so they actually sit in here, um, and that will be right out of the way, but then I'd have to reprint the banana with holes all the way through so the axles could run through that those are mounted on. And I'm not going to do that for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is, and I think giving it that extra height does mean it can move slightly further as well anyway, rather than crashing into anything else that's in the way, like this guide wheel, so... Rather than carry on reprinting parts and causing another problem and another problem, I know just raising the height is going to fix it. And there's still room for the runner for this motor, which I've already checked, so I think that's going to be the solution for now. So we'll have to see how that plan works out of putting the flywheel higher, but I've got a super lightweight plan for the head in this version, so hopefully it will be fine. Otherwise I still have the option to move those wheels out and drop the flywheel down again. Uh, but for now we're going to fill it full of lead, so... I would note as well that I had to um, take a Dremel to these to allow the bolt heads to go through on the bottom of the Lazy Susan, although I could have countersunk them, of course. Right, so each third of this is going to be full of two kilograms of lead shot. I don't want it to rattle, though, so I'm going to put a small amount of liquid latex in, in layers, like a lasagna, and kind of mix it up as I go, and we'll see how that works out. Hopefully that'll help bind it together. I've poured a small amount of latex in the bottom there, and now I'm going to mix as much lead shot in as I can, and hopefully that'll be enough to bind all of it, but if I need to put some more in, I will. But I don't want very much latex, because it is air drying, and if it's totally full, it will never, ever dry. So, uh, let's see how that goes. There's a bit of lead. I'm just going to use the end of a paintbrush to make sure that's all mixed in. Right, there we go. Each section has two kilograms in, so I have a six kilogram flywheel, which feels fairly weighty, probably pretty much the same as I had in version two at an estimate. 
So I think this is going to be pretty cool, even with the flywheel at that height, and the weight of this feels about the same as the whole of version 2 at the moment. Um, even though it hasn't got its head on, it hasn't got any other drive motors, it hasn't got the batteries in. So I think this flywheel is actually much heavier than I had before, and we'll have to see how that goes. With all this mass in the flywheel, there's actually going to be quite a lot of weight pulling down on the ends of the banana, which of course curves underneath. That's going to push the ends apart, and that means the wheels won't run smoothly anymore. The danger is it pushes the little bogey wheels down, and the main drive wheel doesn't engage with the side of the barrel. So the plan is going to be to constrain this. I already have these blocks which um, go on the top where it's mounted, and they bolt down onto the mounts at each end of the banana. But this still could slip through. So the plan is to put a piece of studding, which is 6mm threaded rod, all the way through here. I need to cut the axle slightly shorter, put a bigger washer on each end, and then obviously that washer will come and be constrained against the end of this to pull the two sides back in and keep that banana in a perfect shape. The next thing we need to build for this is the track that the side-to-side -side axis runs on. So I get rid of a few things here. Let's get rid of that. We can see that um, we've actually got this track and it's coupled to the motor mounting at the bottom so the track stays still and then the motor there that does the side-to-side -side axis moves along with the trousers and it runs along that track to move it sideways. So I've moved those parts out, so that's the motor bracket that drives the main ball round and this is the track here, so I've subtracted one from the other to give me a mount here which I will solvent weld and I've also put teeth on the track and the aim is going to be, um, rather than having a gear and a geared track with um, backlash with gaps in between I'm going to actually try and do a textured track and a soft rubber tyre that grips it and obviously I'll be able to put different tyre profiles on to change around and see which one works best. We'll probably try a smooth one to start with. But first of all we'll get this track printed and mounted and check that everything runs okay. I fitted the track and solvent welded it in and let the acetone go off overnight. The, all the parts are ABS so they can be solvent welded together. Um, so that is the tooth track in there and as you can see the motor runs against it. And it runs pretty true, it's actually quite hard to um, film in there, oh, maybe that's better. So that runs along there, backwards and forwards. So we just need to make a Ninja Flex uh, wheel to run on that and the track will hopefully bite into the rubber. So I've already done the hub here, which is just a plastic hub, and now I'm going to print a NinjaFlex tire on the Lulzbot Mini with a Flexi extruder. and obviously I can interchange the tires pretty easily. It's pretty much how I did the main drive wheel that you can just see down there with the red tire on. Here's my Ninja Flex tyre that I've printed, so it's about 35% infill, so it's quite squashy, but not that squashy. I did actually do another one, which was slightly smaller. So this is the one we're going to try, and to put the hub on, all we need to do is put that in the middle, and there we go, so now we can bolt that on. Right, hmm, that's a bit slippy actually, probably too much, so um, although it's squashing it at the bottom, it's not quite uh, good enough to hold it in place, so I'm going to try a different tyre profile, probably one like the other little wheels I made with a round profile and a high density infill. So I almost immediately decided to scrap that idea and print this, which is still Ninja Flex. It's still the same infill, about 35%, but obviously it's got teeth on. And by trial and error, actually, I got this right first time, but I did print this first, which also worked first time. Um, it's got 45 teeth, and it aligns perfectly with my track. 
So uh, basically we're going to bolt this in and obviously being rubber means I can squash it right against the track um, and there'll be no backlash so there's no, there'll be no gaps between the teeth and also it'll be quite quiet and if it does skip it doesn't really matter because it will just crush so it's going to be quite forgiving and hopefully provide a lot of traction. I've bolted that to the motor, same as I did with the big wheel, with the washer just behind it, one in front and the nut, which you can't quite see there. But that um, appears to grip the track excellently. So now I'm just going to power this up and we'll see hopefully that this moves side to side. I'm just going to stick this battery on that motor and hopefully it should lean left to right okay. So let's try it that way. Yep, there we go. It seems to lean more than enough, I think, for stabilising and steering. Let's just turn that round. So that's, yeah, back the other way. The rubber gear um, does skip if it goes past the end stop, but it's going to be measured and restricted, so it can't do that in the end. And also stabilised. So the same as I had front to back in the last version, I'll have side to side stabilisation with an inertial measurement unit in this one. So there we go, and back to the middle. So now with the flywheel on one side, it should drive in an arc shape, and it's not a very tight turning circle. The slower it goes, the tighter it will turn, because wheels like to stand upright when they're going along. So obviously with no speed control, the best I can do is put this on a battery at the moment, and uh, hope for the best. So that pretty much works, the best I can test right now. But of course I've still got the flywheel, so it can turn on the spot for tight situations. So I think that's about a six foot radius turning circle, which isn't too bad, although it is kind of large, but I do have the flywheel, as I say, for turning on the spot still. So it's gonna be mainly used side to side for stabilization, which I didn't have in version two, which is why you always get that wobble, which I can now get rid of. And the whole thing, as I say, is gonna be stabilized with an inertial measurement unit, both for driving and for the side to side. And then I've got the flywheel for spinning, which isn't stabilized, but in all I've got three axis in my ball. So forward, back, side to side, and the ability to spin. So that's an extra axis from version two. I've then got three axis to implement in the head, and then that's all six axis. So the controller's gonna be quite a lot of fun for this one. I did say I was gonna publish the CAD when I'd done most of the mechanics, but I'm still not totally happy that my flywheel's a bit higher than I wanted it to be. So next time I'm gonna build the head mechanics and some of the actual head, and then hopefully after that, I'll get a fair idea whether it will be able to stabilize itself passively. And of course, with the inertial measurement unit and the PID controllers, that makes it a really easy job. So then after that, I'm gonna publish the CAD. So don't forget to subscribe and check back for more updates on this project and other projects. And check out my version two BB-8, if you haven't seen it already, he's hiding down there somewhere. And also check out the social media links in the description to this video, including my new Instagram accounts for sneak peeks of pictures from this project and other projects. That's all for now.